magic can come through so many forms. There's so many different practices and we hold our altars and our body and our blood and our energy field. So, you know, really that's truly what we need and we're, we're living expressions of our altars. Welcome to The Expanded Podcast with your host, Lacey Phillips. As a leading manifestation advisor with a process that's, well, radically different from the old New Age model, mine is rooted in psychology, neuroscience, and my energetic gifts. I created this podcast to help you expand your subconscious limiting beliefs about the potential of deserving the manifestations you are calling in. Therefore, you're tuning into this podcast series to show your subconscious that anything you desire is possible. And by pressing play, you've already started the process of manifesting it. Welcome back. I'm up here recording this at the Forest Retreat House, which I actually have not been back to since early August. So I'm up here with Max, a couple of friends, and celebrating with my family. Tomorrow's a really auspicious time, so I love being here during the fall and this time. Uh, For those of you who have been curious about the Forest Retreat House, I know it's been heavily booked. It's been booked out for months in advance for quite some time. I think during this pandemic, a lot of people have been trying to escape to nature, into the park. But to give you a little heads up, if you have been wanting to come, there are actually four days that just became available in December. They will go quickly. It's the 14th through the 17th, right before I come up to celebrate solstice with my family. And January, February, March look open, and it's actually the calendar's They look kind of open. (laughs) The calendar is totally open until December of 2021. So just wanted to give you that update because every time I talk to a friend, they're like, I keep wanting to book it, but it's booked out for months. So hot tip. It's really beautiful up here. This is the season where we have to actually close down the outdoor amenities because it freezes, you know, so we have to close down the showers and the tubs, but the sauna is still fully open. The outdoors are beautiful. The hikes are beautiful. And it's the time that you get to enjoy the fireplace inside and make the warm tonics with our herbs. So it's actually really cozy and you get to make beautiful meals with friends and celebrate these awesome rituals and holidays such as tomorrow. So I will be celebrating as I go very deeply into today with our guest, Sawin tomorrow. It's one of my favorite pagan holidays. It's where we celebrate nature with my mom and friends and Max. We celebrate how thin the veil is and bringing our ancestors in. We actually have a practice linked below that we shared two years ago, I think, with magnetic meetups. So if you are wanting to also celebrate, as we speak about in this episode, with your magnetic meetup or friends, it's a great uh, step-by-step practice of how you can create that really sacred space, you know, nurturing with the environment using nature, and using these old rituals. And that brings me into today's guest. I am so, so excited. There really wasn't, you know, a more fun episode we could have than with our witch that we work with. (laughs) And so today we welcome incredible guest Kiki Robinson, who goes by the opulent witch. She is a witch. She's an artist. She's a tarot reader. She's a star seed, such as myself, or so I always have been told by psychics. And she's a psychic medium. And her work involves assisting in healing and liberating the collective, disrupting and dismantling oppressive systems, and transformation through creative modalities. I was first introduced to her by a friend who she had been remarkably helpful for. So I did a session with her initially and she blew my mind. I was like, oh, she's kind of young and, you know, and really sweet and soft spoken, which you'll hear. And then she just was like this powerhouse. (laughs) So it's funny because when we think of maybe working with, uh, you know, a a witch or anybody who's practicing Wicca or practicing magic, you always have, or I do personally, I have this image in my mind of an elder and So it's so refreshing to work with somebody who is so skilled, so young and and steeped in their magic. And now she's become wellness's hot secret witch. (laughs) 
<laughs> I've recommended her to quite a few friends and I tell this story in the episode, but I was trying to make this lunch date with two of my friends in wellness and they both kept having to switch around the times because one was like, oh, well, I have my session with Kiki at 11 and the other was, I have my session with Kiki at two. So we were just trying to squeeze this in and this is like their third or fourth session with her. I personally have only experienced one, which was fantastic. And then I brought her in to do a session with the entire team to really hold the collective for all of you, the people in our community, the team itself, and just make sure that we are very sovereign and, you know, really accelerating at a really high vibration that we are all working towards by unblocking, expanding and, you know, passing tests. So she's been so powerful. The team loves her. And in this episode, we're going to go pretty deep into all the fun things that you can enjoy for tomorrow. So magic work, spell work, how to find your, your sovereignty and how to clear yourself and beautiful rituals you can practice tomorrow in this blue moon, Sawin, both her and I, how we're practicing and the whole gambit. So this couldn't be more festive and more timely. And if anybody does have their interest peaked in working with her, which I warned her about, because <laughs> usually after someone's been on, on an episode like this, uh, you know, their sessions kind of go bananas. But you can use the code SAWIN, which is spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, MAGIC, all one word, M-A-G-I-C. So all caps, S-A-M-H-A-I-N, M-A-G-I-C. You'll see that in the show notes as well. And you'll receive 10% off all of her services. And we've also been sending out really beautiful accountability text messages to the community. As I explained in the past, Dr. Tara taught us how important it is to override an old neural pathway. There has to be a step of accountability. And we thought, oh, this is the greatest way that we can facilitate this for you. And so we have a totally free tech service that we send you tips. We send you reminders of things of when to do the full moon. I send voice notes of, you know, what's coming up for me and little teachings, and it's the first place that you will also receive deals. So if this is something that you're interested in being a part of, again, completely free, this is all in service to you, you can go ahead and text us at 1-213-423-5226. Again, that's 1-213-423-5226. And you'll just text hi or manifest, and then you'll automatically receive the link to opt in to receive tests. You can opt out at any time. And I'm really sad to report it's unfortunately only for the US, Canada, and Puerto Rico right now. We are looking into more countries coming in 2021, but this was the best service we could find. So don't worry. At some point, everyone will be notified on social media and via email when we can do full international. Uh, so looking forward to having this more intimate way to connect with everybody. Now let's get into this episode. Well, welcome, Kiki. So let's start with what I ask everybody. What is your cultural background and upbringing? Yeah, hi. So I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, where I have stayed. I'm very rooted here. I grew up a little bit outside the greater Seattle area in the middle of the woods in a small town and just really connected to nature and the forest growing up. So it's kind of in my body and my bones. My mom is a really beautiful artist. And I come from, on my maternal side, come from a lineage of women artists. And so creating art and being around art was kind of my first form of connection to magic and expression, you know, really just growing up around creation and art making. And then my dad is um, kind of the more science brain. So I kind of had, you know, a balance of both. And my ancestors are Irish, British Isles and Romani. Although I didn't, you know, fully grow up being connected to those ancestral cultural backgrounds. And so a lot of my work has been a journey of reclaiming the ancestral magic of those lineages and 
Yeah, just really connected to those practices and the healing work. You know, it hasn't always been linear, but, you know, it's it's such a beautiful journey in itself. And what about your astrology sign before I get into asking more about all that? I'm a Libra. I'm also a Cancer rising and my moon is an Aquarius. Right. I kind of remember that from our first session. I think you shared that with me. Yeah. Amazing. Well, okay, let's just get right into it. It seems like to me, the magic you practice for the most part has a lot to do with your ancestral roots, kind of stemming from that. Am I correct? Yeah, it is. I, you know, practice in earth honoring traditions and really connected to the elements around like the cycles and the rhythms of, you know, nature and the earth. And then a lot of the work I do is through those ancestral practices and Like I was saying, like it hasn't been linear. Like I really started out in like the more Celtic, Irish, you know, traditions. And then as I kind of worked through the releasing of assimilation, I started really connecting to my Romani ancestors and they started really coming through very strongly. And so a lot of what I do too is helping other people connect to their ancestors too, and really releasing those ties and those blocks or anything that would really keep them from connecting to that deep magic. And would you say it seems like initially you were kind of practicing Wicca, if I'm so bold to say, and you've moved now into, I'm assuming your own thing, but what would you sort of call your practice now? It's called traditional magic. So I would say that the roots are paganism or Wicca. And with traditional magic, it's really so much connected to ancestor and to those elements and to the earth. I also very much so connect to cosmic and galactic energies. So I kind of meld the both and I have kind of created my own you know, unique practice through just many years of exploring and, you know, discovering and bringing together all the lineages of my ancestors, but also connecting to like my galactic family or my cosmic family. I love that. It's interesting. So I am rooted in paganism and certainly have practiced traditional Wicca. And, you know, my mom has a lot of that going on for her. She has a lot of gifts, as did my paternal grandmother. But it's really fascinating because it never totally connected. And I realized that, you know, there's so many forms of magic out there and and which is you have like, you can have the earth practice, you can have cooking. I mean, there's so many forms, herbalism, midwifery, and mine is truly energetic. And so it was fascinating when I would try to root it, you know, I would be at the altar and I'd be lighting the candle for the fire and the incense for the air and I'd have the water and the earth. I never super connected to that. I love that we're starting to touch on that I think everybody, you know, is rooted in their old ancestral practices, pre-religion being released, and just honoring that we all have different gifts and ways that we connect with magic. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah, I always feel like our body is an altar and we are so connected to the birthright of our magic and the expression of our magic, you know, granted there are things that happen that disconnect us from our magic. And my journey has been so much around reclaiming that magic, but I love to think about how magic can come through so many forms. There's so many different practices and we hold our altars in our body and our blood and our energy field. So, you know, really that's truly what we need and we're, we're living expressions of our altars. I love that you use the word reclaiming. Would you agree with me that everybody harnesses magic? Oh, fully. We are such powerful beings and I think it is our birthright to connect to our deep magic. And when you work with people, because even in our session that we did pre doing the team session, you said you come from this lineage and the women and all the things. When you're working with people to reclaim 
even just starting to learn their gifts, their unique gifts, or tapping into their own magic, what would be some tools you would suggest or just awareness? So I do suggest for folks, if they're just starting their journey, I do suggest creating an altar for yourself and your magic, just because it creates a really visual expression of the magic that we do hold in our bodies and our blood. And so it is a way to work with that expression on a very like external, physical level. So it kind of creates this visceral and like palpable way of working with the inherent, you know, magic that's in our, in our beings and really connecting to those deeper forms of magic. Like I always suggest that we reach back eight to nine generations through the lineage to the ancestral force that can feel very primordial. It can feel potent, you know, and there's so many ways that we can be blocked from our ancestral magic, like bindings or curses and just even the disconnect from those practices. When we reach back eight to nine generations or even deeper, we're able to connect to the ancestral force and the deep, very visceral potency of the magic. We can be our own ancestor and thinking about how time is a construct and we can connect to our past self, our future self. So in a way we can really connect to that true and powerful self of our soul that exists beyond time and space. So really calling in that aspect of yourself, calling in the parts of yourself that exist beyond time and space, but also exude that power, exude authenticity and expression of the soul as well. And nobody kill me because I will loop back, I promise. And the tip of everybody's mind right now, they're like, cool, how do I do that? <laughs> so don't worry. When we get back to Sawin, I will come back and ask this question to you of a little bit of a practice. But before that, I really want to hear if you have a potent moment where you discovered you had extrasensory gifts. Because I remember mine. I've had many, but I think it also helped expand other people to understanding, oh, something like that happened to me and I have them as well. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, I would say the first time that I experienced this was probably when I was quite younger. So when I was like between the ages of 11 and 13, and I remember my claircognizance, my clairvoyance really coming online and being able to see spirits, to know things. I was experiencing a lot of like telepathy or like reading minds. And I remember just being really, honestly, very freaked out. <laughs> and I, I was like 13 at the time. And You know, now I can look back and kind of understand what was happening for me. But when, you know, we're disconnected from elders that would have taken us through those initiations or connection to spirit workers, it can feel very scary, I think, when we're quite young and experiencing that. And then I went through a pretty major awakening when I was about 17 18, my psychic gifts just really turned on and I had no boundaries. (laughs) And so a lot of what I've learned is psychic boundaries, consent, and psychic protection since that happening. (laughs) It's interesting too, because you like, I always call you wellness's secret weapon. (laughs) (laughs) Because anyone who's like in to my mom, to coworkers of hers, I mean, everything, anybody who's just getting a little bit of the evil eye, you know, other people's shadow projections, I'm like, oh, you got to talk to Kiki. (laughs) It was actually funny. I was scheduling a lunch a couple of weeks ago with uh, two friends in wellness and we're trying to pick a time. And the first one was like, oh man, I have a session with Kiki at 11. The other was like, well, mine's at two. And so I was like, oh yeah, he's become wellness's secret weapon. Oh my God, that's so sweet. <laughs> so I love the psychic protection piece because you're so graceful and gentle in the way that you go about it. And 
you know, there's no, no evil or anything like that. It's just really grace and beauty and being able to give back what's not ours, et cetera. So exactly. I'm glad you touched it on that. I, one thing that one of our teammates had to ask, and I actually think it's really pertinent because I personally have actually never had any luck with using magic and spells. In fact, like spells to me, even when I've tried to invoke them, it's just never, it's not as potent as say, understanding energetics and working with manifestation. However, my mom is really good at invoking spells. So I want to get your take on the legitimacy of spells, working with spells, all in the name of great fun as well at this time. Yeah, I do love spell work. I I work with it quite a bit. And I see spell work and spells as the power of our intention. Granted, there's so many other layers that go into that because if we're working a spell and creating a spell, but we're also having like an underlying story or, you know, there's other energies that are entangled in that, then you know, the result might not be what we had planned. So when I do spell work, I really love to be very thorough. So I usually will work a spell maybe for like a month because I like to really cover all my bases. You know, you're going to want to have those psychic boundaries and connection to the foundation of your altar, whether you work with a physical altar, you, you know, just work with the altar of like your body and your spirit. But I always feel like we're powerful and like people cast spells all the time and unknowingly. Oh, yes. And, you know, even with your thoughts, our thoughts are so powerful and our energy is so powerful. And like we can curse people, we can put love spells on people. There's so many, you know, ways that people, yeah, unknowingly do spell work. And so when I work with spell work, I like to be very intentional. I like to make sure all my bases are covered. I'm going through each step. I'm not always necessarily like methodical about it because I think that working spell and ritual is a form of art. And I think it is a form of creativity. So I like to really make my own spells up. And a lot of the time it's for the purpose an intention of healing, of ancestral healing. I've been really into remithing spells. So taking those narratives and those belief systems that maybe we, you know, inherited from our ancestors that are binding us or oppressing us and transforming those belief systems through remithing. And then creating new belief systems or, you know, a new narrative that can really work to uplift our dreams and our hopes and ultimately the healing of the collective as well. Great take. I love what you said in the sense that we may be casting them without knowing, like if we even bring it down to layman's terms and we just take out the word spell, it's really using energetic intention towards something that's casting something essentially. So I think that was really great. And and it sounds like you're working at 2.0 level right now, which is really exciting. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the next question she had, <laughs> our teammate, <laughs> I love it. She was like, let's get Kiki's take on protection work, which we've kind of covered. And I think right now is just such a pivotal time for so many feeling so much tension. The veil is so thin in general. You know, what are your thoughts on what's most effective when it comes to protection work? And her other thought on it was the energetics of it. If you're rooted in fear, say when you're doing it, um, is there also something bigger to address? Is it going to be as effective? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I love protection work. I do it in multiple different ways. I really love to layer it. And so much of my practice and my purpose is to be a community witch and I'm here for to be in service for the healing of the collective. And so I 100% have to make sure like my energy is protected first and foremost. So I really like to layer and I like to do that in multiple ways. I really like working with 
visualization. And one of the ways I do that is through mirror magic, (laughs) which... I love that too, which I kind of intuitively landed on before our team session. But when we were in our big team session, you use that, which really validated that tool. It's incredible if you want to talk about it. Yeah. I love using mirrors. You know, mirrors are so potent in so so many ways. Like we can use them as self-reflective devices or, you know, items, but we can also use them for protection because it reflects back the energy that's being sent to us, whether knowingly or unknowingly. I also want to just name again that people are very powerful. We are powerful and we don't recognize sometimes when we're disconnected from our magic, we don't recognize our power in that way. And someone's directing energy at you unknowingly, they have the power to really kind of infiltrate. And that's kind of how curses can be created because it creates a binding of the energy. So I really like to work with mirrors because it also brings that aspect of accountability and just gently reflecting back the energy that's being directed at you. It just kind of gently reflects back like it's no harm, no foul. You know, it just kind of brings in that aspect of responsibility and accountability Because, you know, when we do psychic protection work, our main intention is sovereignty and really honing and also bringing that element of sovereignty in can also even through intention create protection for you because it's saying, I do not consent to this energy. I do not consent to even participating in this. So we can, you know, like I was saying, we can layer through denouncing or saying, I do not consent to participation in this. And then through visualization of placing mirrors around your field, I love working with the elements. So I love working with fire for psychic protection, just kind of creating a ring of fire around you and just burning away all that kind of stagnant energy because we want to really hold our altars as sacred. We do have to protect our energy and protect our magic. You know, whatever work we are doing in the world, it's important to have those protections. Yeah. And, you know, for anybody who's like, okay, so I have to buy a mirror, (laughs) what Kiki's talking about, which you did allude to, and just to kind of bring this into the same terminology with what many people in this community know with manifestation, I tend to see unwanted psychic projection, you know, when it's coming at me or say you're feeling it. And when you say unknowingly or even knowingly, it tends to be just somebody else's shadow, right? At the end of the day, we're all just mirrors for each other who are essentially showing each other where we have shadow self that's unaddressed. And so what I love about it is when you were doing this with us in a session, Kiki, it was during a very safe and protected space. But I think even the way I've practiced this mirror work intuitively is in a DI. So when I'm feeling a lot of tension at me, there was one particular time I was feeling a lot, you know, a bit ago, and it just came to me that I'm going to put up a mirror for whom sent the people that are sending it to me, just so it reflects back their shadow for them. And, and that's the accountability piece. And that I too can also see my piece in this that I need to work on. So what Kiki's talking about is visualization. And I loved what you did for us. You surrounded us in mirrors yeah. with pink fire. I think it was pink fire, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Cause I work so much with colors. I'm a very visual person. So a certain color of fire will come in for the person receiving the psychic protection. You can also work with mirrors on your altar too. Like I like putting physical mirrors on my altars and I put them around my home and around my home I've buried little tiny mirrors as a form of protection, you know, so we can also bring those visuals into the physical as well. Uh, I'm all about mirrors, so I got them everywhere and through intention, consecrate them as protection and just name that they're for protecting the home or protecting my energy or protecting my practice.
So I'm quickly interrupting this episode to invite you if you're ready to start your manifestation journey, or if anything you've heard in our manifestation episodes has piqued your interest to begin. We have a la carte workshops in everything from the basics bundle, which is what we recommend to everyone who starts. It's the formula that actually teaches you how to manifest, unblocked inner child, and unblocked shadow. We also have a la carte workshops on love and money. But the real gem is the Pathway membership because it encompasses every single workshop we have. It's a year-long membership with full access to the few a la carte offerings we have and exclusive workshops not available anywhere else, such as the daily practice, which is what everybody in the Pathway uses, hopefully at least three times a week to daily in order to truly create the new neural pathways that one needs in order to manifest and houses the library of our deep imaginings, which is our unique hypnosis process that allows you to get into your subconscious and overwrite those old neural pathways, creating the new ones. You can use our special code EXPANDED, all caps, E-X-P-A-N-D-E-D, to receive $20 off your first a la carte workshop purchase or $20 off your first month of the pathway. Again, that's all caps, EXPANDED, E-X-P-A-N-D-E-D. Okay, now back to the episode. Let's get into paganism (laughs) because it's so fun. This is being released on the 30th. So tomorrow will be Samhain. How do you sort of define paganism? I see it as an honoring of the earth and the rhythms and the cycles of the earth in which we are tenders to here. You know, we've been really disconnected over the last, you know, however many centuries from the practices that honor the earth. So paganism is a way to also really connect to those rhythms and cycles of nature and inevitably connect to the rhythms and cycles within our bodies and our our beings as well. Exactly how I see it. And I tend to personally practice pagan holidays more than commercial holidays. So for tomorrow, how will you be spending your day? What are some practices you'll be doing? Yeah, so uh, Samhain is a big time of ancestral veneration for me. So really honoring those who have passed, even those ancestors that I never knew So I make a big ancestral meal. So I love to get them all their favorite drinks, (laughs) cigarettes. I make them ancestral traditional foods. And I start back at the beginning of October and I, you know, create my ancestral altar. Like I'll build it up and light candles for them every day and, you know, really just uplift them and their magic as well. The veil is so thin. So that connection to the spirit world at this time is, I mean, it's like we're in the same room practically. So I, I really honor ancestor at this time. And I also think that Samhain is such a beautiful time of transformation as well, because we're pulling those initiations that we experienced over this last year into our beings and really integrating what we've learned over this last year, you know, the challenges that we've experienced, the triumphs we've experienced. And then so it's this deep, you know, threshold that we're moving through. Yeah, I'm very similar. I love to start the day. I tend to, I'll be at the forest retreat house. The community knows what that is. And so I tend to go on a nature walk by the river with my mom and we'll collect a lot of nature. I have an altar there that's always living. So In fact, I think one of the things I love when I am practicing magic, even though I don't connect with the physical as much, but it feels like such an intentional ritual, is lighting the candle facing the West. feels really beautiful to call in the ancestors that have passed. And if I do have photos of the ones that I know of, we put them out, inviting the energy of them in. I love the meal practice, which is such a traditional practice in this, but I'm so lazy at it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just invite them like, hey, come hang out, you know, on 
honoring you. Tell you tell me anything I need to know. I'm here for it. So we tend to really honor it with the nature walk and then celebrating with the altar. We have, you know, a workshop called Unblock Full Moon. I invite anybody in the community to do that. How will you be working with this blue moon? Ooh, I love to do celebration on full moons. You know, like I was saying in my personal practice, I've been working a lot of remithing around family and ancestral narratives. So I am hoping to have a big fire. I have a fire pit at my house. And so I also really love working with fire on Samhain as well, as well as full moons. So it's kind of my go-to element. And I also really love connecting it to water since we're in autumn in the northern hemisphere right now. And so I'm probably going to be working with uh, water and fire in the way of that kind of subconscious dream realm of water, but really bringing in the transformation of fire. And I'm probably going to be burning (laughs) a lot of things in the fire, just really letting go and releasing this past year as well. So if we were to set people up with a practice, a very easy and general practice that they could do, let's walk them through creating a basic altar for tomorrow. Perfect. I really like to have a altar cloth and, you know, you can get creative with this. It can be, you know, fur, it can be a beloved scarf or, you know, even just a beautiful fabric that you like to work with. But I really love working with an altar cloth that represents that connection to foundation, to source. On top of that, I love to have a candle right at center. And that, for me, represents the connection to life force or spirit. I really love fixing my own candles with like herbs and oils and, you know, really setting intentions with them. I love layering within magic. So sometimes I'll even charge my candles on a tarot card or some sort of, you know, magical spell that I want to really infuse into the candle. So I like to have a candle right at center. And then what you're going to want to do is get representations of the elements. And this is another way you can be really creative with it, but you're going to want to get physical representations of air, which you can use a feather, you can use bells, you, color. You, yeah, color. You stones are great too. Yeah. And then you're going to want to get incense. Yeah, smoke is great. And then fire. You can use an, another like smaller candle. Pyrite is great. There's, yeah, like obsidians or, you know, different stones you can use. And then water. I always love to have like a really beautiful chalice of water in the center or the the station of water and then earth I love just going out and getting some soil and um you know placing it in a really beautiful dish and then I would suggest you know placing on that altar anything that really represents your power your magic to really bring the element of you into it and you know just even naming that this is a an altar of your magic, an altar of healing for you, you know, whatever intention you're wanting to bring in, you can place different poems or objects, anything that feels connected to your essence or your expression. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. I love this. I'm so excited. (laughs) The way that I tend to do the nature walk in the morning, I would collect the river water to be my water element and pick up at that time will be acorns and, you know, leaves will have fallen. So I'll pick up that for the earth or dirt. You know, you mentioned earlier working even eight to nine generations back with ancestors while you're at your altar. How would you instruct people to call in that energy? I would first make an offering to that ancestral force. And you can do this through many ways, but I love flowers. Mm -hmm. I think that the flower world is a a beautiful and very divine realm. And I love making offerings of flowers to my ancestors. So what I would do is, you know, place flowers on your altar with the intention, asking for 
those deeper ancestors, the ancestral force. You can even call on ancestral mother or the ancestral grandmothers to be present with you and just I think creating invitation, they want to be in relationship with us. Creating that invitation, it really opens the door. Something I will say too, just boundaries. Something I like to do is invite the sovereign, well, right ancestors to be present with me. So we really want to have boundaries when we're working with ancestors as well, because, you know, you just open the door and then they all show up and then you're like, okay, I got a full house now. (laughs) They all want something different here. So I just really like to set the boundary of, I'm calling in benevolent, kind, bright, sovereign ancestors that want to be in relationship with me. And then it's just a way to create that mutual relationship because they want to be in relationship with us those deeper ancestral forces, I really truly feel like they yearn to be in that connection and we yearn for them as well. So there's an aspect of coming home in the process. I love it. I love it. You know, you kind of mentioned enhancing psychic gifts after your awakening. And Mm -hmm. what are your tips for somebody who's just, you know, maybe been working with their altar tomorrow night and really kind of getting this energy going are there any things, tools, you know, practices you use to enhance channeling, your claircognizance, clairvoyance? Yeah, I really like using tools. I use the tarot and I have used the tarot since I kind of went through my bigger awakening when I was 17. And tools can really help in the way because it brings in that third energy or like it brings in that physical representation that we pull our magic through our beings and then pull it out onto almost like creating like a storyboard or a vision board and a narrative with the tarot. There's also so many beautiful forms of divination. We can use pendulum work or scrying We can um, use the tarot or oracle cards to almost like create the container in itself to harness and help develop our gifts. I also suggest having fun with it. It's really fun to really explore our psychic gifts and how those are coming through because we're all unique. We all have different ways in which they, they come through and, you know, there might be one way that really works for one person And then, you know, maybe that doesn't work for someone else because they have those different clairs kind of coming online. One might be stronger than the other. So really maybe even asking how are my gifts coming through, asking your spirits, asking your guides, like what ways in which my psychic gifts want to come through because there might be a lot of clairvoyance coming through and all of a sudden you're seeing things. And then I think that's where it's helpful to have (laughs) psychic boundaries and, you know, that psychic protection because it can be really overwhelming. Agreed. Yeah. And my other question is before we kind of get into the collective, what is your favorite way to truly clear yourself? So I do that through sound. I do it multiple ways, but I really love sound and song. And so what I will do if I want to clear myself is I'll start playing my tambourine and I will start singing. And I have different songs that I like to sing, but it's really through that intention, bringing the intention into the song and into the voice that I am clearing myself. I also love dancing too. So sometimes I'll clear through dance just to move the energy. I'll also like to bring visualizations in to clear myself. I like working, like I was saying, with um, fire and water. So sometimes I'll imagine fire all around me, really just clearing stagnation or anything I picked up through the day. I also really love just dissolving any cords. Like I'll say, I dissolve and clear any cords to any person, place, or location that isn't of my highest sovereignty. I just ask that those be lifted effortlessly, taken to where they need to be. And yeah, another thing I like to say 
just, I do this throughout the day is I say, I ask that any energies that is not in resonance with my true and powerful self be effortlessly lifted and taken to where it needs to be or where it can be for the purpose of healing. And even just saying it sometimes will really lift anything lingering or anything in my field that just isn't in resonance with my Mm -hmm. sovereignty. It's not in resonance with my true and powerful self. So I think sometimes just even asking that it be lifted can really help. I agree. So for anybody whose interest is piqued and they're like, I want to learn more about paganism and connecting with nature deeper, magic, a few of my favorite books have been To Walk a Pagan Path is a big one that I've loved. It also just happens to be one of my favorite ones because it distills paganism down into sort of more of a kid nature world. I love the magical family. (laughs) And then I don't know about you, but in terms of just people who are wanting to get acquainted with traditional, you know, magic, Wicca was a really good book to start that journey. Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, I actually do really recommend, there's a few different really beautiful online programs around magic. I went through the School of Traditional Magic. It's based in Seattle and currently it is taught online. There's also this really cool book that I love and I've had for years called Kissing the Limitless. And it's so beautiful. It really connects you to your living expression of your magic through ritual, through journaling, through spell work, through dream work. A lot of the beginnings of my magical practice was through dream magic and dream work. So that is a book that I definitely recommend. Well, let's get into the collective and feel out your magic, your beauty a little bit so people can get a sense of that at this really kismet, thin veiled time. Yeah, so I actually drew cards um, before I came on for the collective just because I wanted to really tap in and really connect to what is, you know, happening in the collective. I know we're in also these retrogrades and we're in Scorpio season. And so I feel like there's so much transformation that is available right now, more so than I think any years past around this time, I'm really sensing that the the veil is, a, is thinner than it's ever been. So we have access to these realms and different timelines even to really work some potent magic. So I do want to share the cards that I drew. So I'm working with a deck that I created with my co-creator, Ilva Mara Rejasuski, And it's called The Living Altar. So I drew cards that are right at the center, kind of like what is anchoring the collective right now, what's available for healing in the collective. And I actually drew Ancestor and a card called Expression. And both cards are based in water. So I see the Expression card as very much that connection to the expression of our soul, expression of our purpose, it feels to me like in collective, there's a lot of questioning of what is my purpose right now? Why am I here? What am I here to do? What are my gifts? And I just really kind of geek out because I think that we all have these really beautiful, unique gifts that our soul wants to express. So I'm really hearing the question of how does my soul want to express itself? How does my magic want to express itself. And I think that that can be very vulnerable to really kind of delve into that realm. But it's through the vulnerability that we can really find our strength and we can find transformation through that as well. And then with the ancestor card, this is, I mean, it's like what we've been talking about, which is, it's kind of uncanny. It's that beautiful expression of the magic of your ancestors So really, you know, connecting to even ourselves as our own ancestor, it feels like water is so present this season. It feels like that reflective journey into the subconscious 
feels like it's really calling to folks right now to really explore what is in this realm of like the magic of my subconscious or the magic of my dreams, this would be a really great time too to do some dream work as well. I totally love all of that. And, you know, for anybody who is wanting to tap into their subconscious more on exactly what you're saying, Unblocked Full Moon tomorrow is is a wonderful tool for that too. Yeah, love that. I would love to share a ritual suggestion um, yes. that I've been working. So I've been working with water this season quite a bit. I've been really into just the healing and powerful properties of water, going to bodies of water and really calling in the elements of water. But I've been recently working this ritual where it's part of like free, that aspect of free mything of like taking those narratives that we, you know, we uncover at this time that we're like, this is a narrative I do not want to have about myself anymore or have about my, you know, my life. And something I would suggest is writing those narratives down, you know, through fire, you can burn them to release them. Samhain is such a great time to release those kind of negative patterning or, you know, belief systems about yourself. And then working with water and the dream realm is also I feel like such a beautiful way to bring in the the new narratives. So I would say, what new narratives do you want to have about yourself that really uplift your soul and your magic? So you can get a bowl of water. I really love collecting beautiful like vintage bowls to do my ritual work in. It can be any type of bowl. Getting a bowl of water and blessing it and just saying like the intention of this ritual is for healing, for working with my dreams and the subconscious. And then what I would do is I'd write down those new narratives that you want to integrate into your being and your mind. And you can either burn the new narratives and then sprinkle the ash into the bowl of water, or you can just place those little pieces of paper What I've been doing and working with this ritual is I bring in flowers. So I bless the water with flowers. I love working with flower essence. Another way to layer our magic is to like bring in all these different kind of modalities. So I'll like put some flower essences in there, you know, working with herbs as well. Anything that's going to really uplift those intentions. I love working with like rose, like rose is my go-to just because it's so heart centered, but it's so boundaried at the same time, that thorn magic. And then what you can do is place the bowl of water right by your bedside. You can also place it like under your bed. But when you go to sleep, say this water represents my dreams. This water is the holder of my subconscious and I am now integrating these new narratives into my subconscious and just letting the water heal you while you sleep. You know, maybe journaling about your dreams the next morning, like what messages came through, what visuals came through and just kind of seeing what you receive. Amazing. And do we want to leave off on that note or is there anything else? Well, I would love to. I'm happy to read a spell for Ooh. expression. So that sure. you, I drew the card of expression and it comes with a spell. So I will just recite it. So it says, I am the current, the waves, the vast expanse of ocean. I am the limitless void and yet I am pulled by the tides of truth, seething with voice. I sing songs of power, somber in the courage of my heart. I unmask my witness, embracing vulnerability. The depth of my expression rises to the surface. What am I choking back? I will not risk further injury of soul or stagnation of purpose, holding back the dams. Beautiful. Well, I'm so grateful, Kiki. Where can we find you? How can we book with you? Give us the whole down low. Oh, I'm so grateful too. I go by Opulent Witch. And so my website is 
www.opulentwitch.com. And then I'm also on Instagram at Opulent Witch. And I put out like weekly collective readings. I put out spell work and ritual work. And you can also find me at The Living Altar. Livingaltar.com is my art creation and oracle deck and ritual community work. Thank you so much. And happy Samhain tomorrow to everybody. Happy Samhain. Yes. Well, I thought that was really, really a wonderful episode and so fun. And I hope that that gave a lot of people their spiritual fix. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, feel free to send it to any friends, family members, or any of your magnetic meetup friends to have a magnetic meetup for tomorrow. Also, once a month, we always announce a winner or sometimes two winners who have written a really beautiful five-star review about their experience with the podcast or the workshops, and they win a one-year membership to The Pathway. This month, we have REA Frey. So if that handle is yours, please get in touch with our customer service team so they can gift you the one-year membership to The Pathway. And I'm going to go ahead and let you know what Ray Frey had to say. This was on 10-3 of this month, and she starts out with Life Changer. I stumbled upon this podcast a couple of years ago and immediately signed up for all of the workshops. While I started off hot and heavy, I don't think I was truly ready to do the deep, deep work it requires. I continued listening to the podcast and recommitted myself to the workshops in the pathway. I've seen such incredible things from this work, four book deals with one of the biggest publishers in the world, starting a brand new business and amassing six figures in one year, total spiritual surrender, letting go of control issues, recommitting to my relationships and letting go of those that didn't serve me, also becoming expanders for other people and stepping into my power. This work is the most important work you can commit yourself to, not because of the things you can acquire, but the knowledge you'll have about yourself. Thank you, Lacey and TBM, for all that you do and have done. Your work's changed my world. Heart emoji. Thank you so much. We love receiving these, and the most important reason why we do this and we encourage people to share is to expand others. So anytime you feel inspired or you've had an inspirational moment with this podcast or with the work, feel free to share it and automatically enter to win a one-year free membership to The Pathway. Until next week, have a beautiful weekend.